Hi everyone, welcome back to my podcast. This is Aria. Today's topic may be heavy and tough for some of you, but it's important to know how the social narratives I am going to talk about today place us in a passive position if we face sexual violence. How many of you have the same experience as mine? That being told not to wear hot and sexy clothing because it's unsafe. I assume most of you have heard about this from parents. From their opinion, wearing long sleeve and jeans like a normal padded jean is the best choice ever. I've seen similar ideas under rape news comments. People were blaming victims for wearing short pants or skirts. Sounds like victims were seducing perpetrators to commit crime. Following these people's logic, a person wearing long sleeves and jeans will never be assaulted. But, is that a fact? Does dress code really stop rape? In 2014, a sexual assault survivor art installation, "What Were You Wearing?" was debuted at University of Arkansas in U.S. This installation was created. By Jane Brookman and Dr. Mary Wong Young Hibbert, who were inspired by poem "What I Was Wearing," which was about Dr. Simmerling's clothing at the night she got raped and her despair about changing clothes couldn't end rape. The student survivors from University of Arkansas voluntarily shared their descriptions of the outfits they were wearing when they were offended. And these outfits were were recreated and then displayed in the exhibition. In the videos and the pictures of the exhibitions held in various communities, you can see that most of the survivors were wearing normal shirts, leggings, or dresses, which were not sexy at all. A story which shocked me was a U.S. Navy soldier. Who was wearing an army combat uniform with a gun, but still be raped? You may be surprised that a soldier with gun was raped, but yes, it happened. It's the reality. The outfits exhibited were from males and females, adults and children, university merch and company uniforms. They showed us people would be assaulted no matter who they are. No matter where they are, and no matter where they wear, dressing is never a factor of sexual violence, and the so-called safe clothing cannot stop rape. Then, what really caused sexual assault? A theory of what led to sexual assault is irresistible sexual impulse, which means. Perpetrators couldn't control their sexual desire because of mental illness, chemical imbalance, or alcohol or drugs. So when perpetrators have such impulse, they will be likely to assault acquaintance or a random person. Then, how does the society respond to rape? People start to suggest victims to pay attention to their clothes and appearance. And not to do things that will increase the risk of being raped. Here, I want you to think about a question: Why it became victims' responsibility to take preventions instead of telling perpetrators not to offend? Let's hear our guest Anita from University of Southern California talking about her opinion on this question. I would say women are victims, and their outfit is not an excuse for the criminals. We should never blame the female wearing too sexy so she get raped. Their outfit have no direct relationship to their suffering, and we must say that the most important thing is to teach male not to assault female, and legislation should protect female. On the court, we must not use the victim's outfit as an excuse. Um, however, the education and legislation are not perfect enough to protect females. So, as a female my th- myself, I personally will not wearing too sexy in the late night in dangerous area. Just like not, I will not bring a luxury bag in front of the robbers or put 
a lot of money on my in my hand, um, in like downtown LA, which is really dangerous. Anita brought up points of legislation and education. As she said, legislation should protect victims. However, there is a big problem with the rape culture in our society. In this culture, few victims would be willing to sue perpetrators because of secondary victimization and acquaintance crime. They were afraid that their experience being acknowledged and judged by everyone if they exposed the assault. You know how the society will blame on victims, right? It will hurt victims again, even cause trauma. The installation and the rape culture are warning us we are not on the right track to educate sex. Since school, dress code took girls wearing clothes in proper lengths was the only way to protect them from male assault. But boys were not taught how to control sexual impulse. Woman body is always seen dangerous and seductive to men, but it's totally a wrong figure under male gaze, and it's never a reason for blaming victims on clothing and physical appearance in rape cases. We need to promote more education on gender equality and sex in school, and say no to rape culture. Being assaulted is never ever victim's fault. It's nothing to do with their dressing. The only way to stop rape is to control sexual impulse on perpetrator's side. If any of you is suffering from this, please don't blame yourself. It's not your fault. Please be brave to ask for help from your family and community. We are with you.